What's up, players? Today I'm going to share with you five easy tips to spice up your R&B rhythm guitar playing. So let's grab our guitars and figure this out, all right? So let's start off with a simple chord progression in minor, D minor. Let's go four, five, one, which in that key, it's going to be G minor. It's going to be A minor and then D minor. Real simple shapes like that. And if we want to spice it up, we start with the most basic, uh, kind of common knowledge move that any uh, beginner with Neo Soul would likely know. I call it the pinky flurry. And all that is, is hammering on and pulling off your pinky around the minor chord. So if I have my minor chord right here with my A string root, I could do it right here. On the E string, right here on the B string. And let's just kind of keep it at those two right now, keep it real simple. And then with this one, I'll do it on the G string. And then uh, let's just leave it like that too. Keep them real simple, all right? Now the most common mistake that I hear when people try this move out is their notes don't come out clearly. So let's take a look at what we need to have down to have a hammer-on or a hammer-on pull-off come out nice and crisp and beautiful, all right? So it all starts, if I have my D minor chord right here, it starts with the lower note, all right? So especially with the bar, I need to have that down strong I'm looking at my high E string, that needs to be clear the whole time because when I'm coming in and out, that's my that's my root in terms of not root note, but you know, root like like the root of a tree, like the root, the foundation. That's what I want. That's like the foundation, man. Alright? So that needs to be there the whole time. Down strong. And then the next part is the pinky needs to be accurately coming down on the string. I think of it like a hammer, right? A hammer coming down on a nail. If you want that hammer to come down, it's got to be right on the center there for that maximum strength, that maximum boom, right in, okay? So your pinky's the hammer, hammer on, right? And then we come down on that string. It needs to be accurate, boom, and pull it off. So that's the first step. We need our bar to be strong the whole time, pinky to be accurate. And then we're starting to get somewhere. And this brings me to my next point. Whenever newer players try this move, they just haphazardly throw it around without any rhyme or reason or anything like that. So we need to think about rhythm when we do it. And the most common rhythm that you would find in this is a triplet, especially the hammer on pull off, right? Because that's our three notes. One, two, three. So we want to fit that into one beat just like this. One, two. So make sure to think about the rhythm when you're trying out these moves because of course we're playing rhythm guitar. How foolish would it be to play rhythm guitar and not being paying attention to the rhythm? And that leads me to just one more thing. Whenever we think about these moves, we want to play fast, right? When it comes to these concepts, I always think to myself, there's no fast in music. I don't ever want to try and play fast. I want to play in rhythm, all right? There are rhythms that are faster, but fast is just an obscure word in music. Rhythm is a precise, exact definition according to whatever song I'm at, and that's where I can lay into my pocket and create this groove that I want to create. Now to practice this, I want to start off with a real simple hammer-on, and then a hammer-on pull-off, kind of like this. Whenever you see rhythm players just flying all across the neck, it's usually just these two simple positions. And if I asked you to play two D minor bar chords, you would likely show me the first two that you learned, which are here with the root on the A string, and here with the root on the D string. Now if I just carry that over to my next two chords, my G minor and my A minor, all of a sudden I got this whole part of the neck that, uh, that opens up and I could just put a little bit more juice in my playing, and I gotta try it like this. Okay, let's continue to build our dynamic comping abilities. Now over this D minor chord, I can do this cool chord move where I add in a C major triad, and it looks like this. It's 
basically these three different triads. We start here on the D, G, B string, go over to the C major triad on the same three, bring it down to the A, D, and G, so D minor triad, and then back to C major. I could play it like this. Now let's try it in rhythm with our chord progression and see how it flows. All right, now let's go outside for a moment, man, and think about these diminished chords. And just like the flurries, just because you know a little bit about it doesn't mean you're using it correctly. Now, when it comes to the diminished chord, the best place to start is just the downbeat before our chord. And that's like a strong, confident note that we could pop in there and it's gonna pull us into the next one, all right? So if we're going to our D minor chord, my diminished chord is gonna be right here, a half step below it at C sharp. So we got C sharp diminished. And I'm gonna put that in the downbeat right before it, right? So I could think about coming from here, my G minor. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, I wanna think of it like that. So we could try it with our groove. Now, if I want to get a little bit crazier and add some moves in there, I could think about just the general idea of our inversion, right? So I have my C sharp diminished chord, and I know it naturally inverts with the same shape up a minor third. But sometimes just moving up a minor third, that's, that's kind of much, right? So we could also think about moving up the actual diminished scale. And I could start right here. And that's a really nice movement going over to our D minor chord. So I would actually start on C, move it up a half step, move it up that minor third, and then boom. If we think about it, we got those three notes, we'll fit those three notes into that beat. And it's a real quick move, you gotta be ready for it, but if you practice it, it's gonna sound real sweet. Let's try it. And finally, after setting up the listener's harmonic expectations with all these minor seven chords, it's cool to pop in that minor 11 or minor nine. And like I said, you gotta set up those expectations. So play that minor seven for a while, and then all of a sudden, when you hear that minor 11 or minor nine, your ears perk up and you go, ooh, I like that, you know? So my two favorite uh, minor 11 and minor nine chords are pretty simple for A minor 11. Do it right there and then right across right here on the a string is my d minor 9. so just taking those two right there sticking with all of our normal moves occasionally popping it in just like this These five ideas are more than enough to mix and match and keep your rhythm playing exciting. For all the tab, the link is in the description below. Keep jamming and stay nasty.